Hey, what's going on, OCC students? It's so good to see you all. Um, it's Mr. Daryl here, and uh, we're going to start our February series titled Red Flags, Respect, and Relationships. Let me just give you a quick disclaimer. Uh, this is a series in which we're going to talk about some pretty real things when it comes to relationships, when it comes to sex, when it comes to respect, and even red flags. And so I just want to make sure that you're aware of that as we just have just an honest dialogue about what these things are. And our heart is simply to ensure that you know know what God has to say about these things and that you are doing all of it in a way that honors God in your life, okay? So let me just simply pray for us and we're going to dive into our message today. Heavenly Father, I simply pray, God, for all of our students today, that you would help us to know, God, what the red flags are and God, how we can simply just honor you in our relationships and our friendships, Father. And even when it comes to, God, the topic of sex. So God, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. So students, as we start this series off today, we're going to talk about our desires. And I simply want to talk to you all about the downstream of your desires. See, when I was a college student, there's often times I used to go down to the Gulf Shores of Alabama and I would canoe just along the river. And I would start at the very top of the river and then we would find our way going all the way to the downstream of the river and expand it into a vast lake. And as we started at the top of the river, we traversed down the river. There's a lot of different, different things and sceneries that we saw as we traversed down the river. But as we got to the end of it, it got into a very large lake. And I just simply wanted to talk to you about how your desires, they start somewhere but they also end somewhere. And if we're not careful, our desires can start somewhere. And if they don't have a, a, something that they're being filtered through, then ultimately we might end up in a place for even doing something that we're not supposed to be doing. So let me just give us just one verse in which we're gonna talk about today and even unpack today. It's in the book of James. It's James chapter one, verses 13, 14, 15, and 16. So let's just simply see what God's Word says for us today as we think through the downstream of our desires. It simply says this, it says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. So let me just kind of just, just, just break down just what our problem is. My, my concern for us is an unsurrendered desire becomes an uncontrollable action. And how an unsurrendered desire, if it's not filtered through the right thing, it will become an uncontrollable action in your life. Student, you need a filter because we all have certain desires that might come up in our lives. But if those desires aren't being filtered through the right things, we might find ourselves in an uncontrollable action. So it's my concern for us today is that we don't realize why we are stuck in some of the same cycles in our lives. Why we find ourselves doing the same things, watching the same things, talking to the same person, and maybe doing an act in which that you are not supposed to be doing, and we don't realize where that is truly connected to. And ultimately, it's connected to our desires. And so I love what, the, what James simply says. He says, hey, we have desires, and we have temptations, but we are tempted by the desires that are within us. And if those desires keep on going, the downstream of those desires that we will be dragged away and enticed, which ultimately leads to sin, which ultimately leads to death. Now what that death just represents, it represents being separated from God because when a desire gives birth to sin and now gives birth to, to, to death, then our relationship with God is affected because then our desires had no filter. Our desires were not surrendered, and now it turns into an uncontrollable action. Maybe you have seen this play out in your life, and you know, maybe you have a desire for money. 
And with that desire for money, you now want to get all the money that you can in your bank account to the point in which that you'll do whatever it takes just to have some money. So now you're not being driven by the desire for what your God-given purpose is. You're driven by the desire of money. Maybe you have a desire for influence. And so you do whatever it takes to get all of the influence, to get as many followers as you want on TikTok or on influence, even to the point to where you might compromise your character just to get some influence. So instead of being driven by what God says about you, now you're being driven by influence. And you're truly just being driven by likes and clicks and comments and applause. And then maybe when it comes to the series, maybe you're driven by this desire for sex. Maybe it's been something that, that you've heard in school, seen online, watched on TikTok. And now it's just creating this desire to have sex. And it's a desire in which that we all have. We know that it comes from God, but a desire that's not surrendered through God's word and filtered through God's word for what he has to say about what's honorable for how we should best use our bodies, we might find ourselves doing things, watching things that are not honorable to God because of a desire that we had that was not surrendered. So students, the question just simply is, how can we ensure that we don't find ourselves doing uncontrollable actions because we had an unsurrendered desire? What an unsurrendered desire is, what that simply means, is that it's a desire that doesn't go through the filter of God's Word. It's a desire that goes unchecked. It's a desire that doesn't have a blue check mark. And that desire has gone unsurrendered to the point to where that desire just flows all the way downstream and it begins to affect everything in your life because you're being controlled by that desire. That's all a surrender or an unsurrendered desire is. But here's the benefit of this. The benefit of this is how, how do we make the shift to ensure that we don't allow our unsurrendered desires to now affect our actions. First thing that we really have to do is to simply surrender our desires to God. We have to say, hey God, I know I have this desire, but God, I'm giving you this desire. And I love what Psalms 37 verse 4 says. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now think about the order of that text right there. It's, it's Psalms 37 verse 4. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, students, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now the order of that is important. What that text doesn't say, it doesn't say, I'll get the desires of my heart, then delight in the Lord. But it simply says, no, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So we simply have to say, hey, how do I know and how can I ensure that as a student that I am delighting myself in the Lord? What do I need to be doing to ensure that I delight myself in the Lord? Hey, it simply starts by this. I mean, what's your word intake like? I mean, how often are you reading God's word? How often are you opening up the Bible and, and, and saying, hey, God, I need to learn by what you have already spoken in your word. I wonder how many of us, to ensure that we are delighting ourselves in the word, that we have the right community that's around us, that the right people in our lives are saying, hey, this is what God's word says. Hey, this is, this is what it looks like to do this in your life because you're surrounded by the right people in your life. They're pointing you back to God and not pointing you back to the culture. And then lastly, sometimes students, it's just simply surrendering our lives over to God and saying that, hey, I'm not in control of my life. I'm now giving that control over to God because I know that my life is way better in his hands and not my own. So to ensure that we delight ourselves in the Lord, it starts by ensuring that we have a good word intake day in and day out. 
that we're surrounded by the right community in our lives. And then lastly, we are just surrendering our whole lives over to Him. And when we do that, the second part of that verse will be true in Psalms 34. That if we delight ourselves in the Lord, that if we find ourselves reading His Scripture day in and day out, if we find ourselves being around the right community, if we find ourselves surrendering our lives over to Him, then He will give us the desires of our heart. But here's the caveat to that. Our desires now become His desires because we delighted ourselves in the Lord. So students, maybe you're here today and you're listening to this today. And you know that you have some desires. And maybe you know that those desires have led to some wrong actions in your life. Maybe you're here today and you find yourself going back to the same thing and doing the things in which that you don't want to do, but you keep on doing them. And maybe you might find yourself today and feeling the, the, the shame or, or the pain or the hurt because of an action that you did that started with a desire. All I simply want you to do today is ask yourself the question, God, have I surrendered my desires to you? God, am I filtering all my desires through your word and through what you have to say? Because if I delight myself in the Lord, then my desires will truly become your desires. So students, all I want you to do is as, as we continue to have this conversation about red flag, respect, and relationships, I simply want you to know that an uncertain desire becomes an uncontrollable action. But here's the hope. A surrendered desire will lead to a controlled life where your desires are being filtered through God's word, and now it'll lead to man, the life in which that God has called you to live. Because all in which that you're doing is done through the lens, and it's filtered through the lens of God's word. So students, where are the downstream of your desires? Because the actions that you're doing right now, they start somewhere. They don't start at the downstream, they start upstream. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I simply pray today for all of our students. God, I pray, God, that as we navigate through these desires in which that we have, God, that we simply know that sometimes they will lead to, if we're not careful, the wrong actions in our life. So I pray that we would no longer live with unsurrendered desires, but surrendered desires. Not to live uncontrolled life, but to live controlled life because... Our lives are being saturated through your word. We are surrounding ourselves with the right community. And more than anything, God, we're giving our whole lives to you. So, Father, would you help us to do that today? Because we simply love you and we'll trust you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.